So welcome to another video of the Vickers MG Collection and Research Association. In this one, it's a series of short clips going through the different Vickers uh, bouts, links that we've got in the collection that we took out for a bit of firing uh, in the last couple of weeks and, and just try to understand how they work, how they were loaded and a little bit more history about the specifics of them. So I hope you enjoy it. Please, as always, become a patron and support uh, the collection as much as possible using the links below. So the first one we want to look at is the standard Mark I belt. Introduced when the Vickers was first introduced in 1912. It was uh, originally used on the Maxim. It's a Maxim type belt that was in service since the 1880s. All of the other uh, countries that use the Maxim use very similar belts as well. So the Vickers just took on that belt. It's a series of brass strips that provide the spacing for the belt and they are repairable uh they you know the rivets and the uh, strips are carried in the spare parts kits so it can be filled by hand as you can see here we're using some drill rounds and it also works in the belt filling machine that you've seen in a, a other of our videos so you know this this saw service right through to the end of end of the vicar's life particularly for training uh the australians carried on using it in action until the 50s we'd stopped a little bit before that uh, you can see there, I'm just adjusting those. And we have one of the really rare belts. This is ground service metal link. Everybody thinks metal link or non-disintegrating belts are uh, for aircraft. Uh, but this was issued in 1915, really early on. And as you can see, it's just uh, pressed steel and then folded. And it seems to use the same uh, short split pin as is carried for uh, securing the collar roller on the machine gun. So this one is uh, stamped up um with the manufacturer and you can see that we, we, we're using drill rounds here you push it through push the round through and this top the top clip actually only goes around the bullet the head not the round itself some people try and push it through all the way through all, all the way to the collar but it doesn't this is as far as it goes so we we popped five rounds in here uh, we're aware of this link being currently sold of eight eight, eight links for £500, so it's extremely scarce. Uh, we're lucky enough to have this good quality section in the collection, So, and, and certainly uh, had second thoughts about it, potentially uh, putting it through the gun. So there we go, there's five rounds uh, loaded in, quite nicely, nicely spaced. What we also have in the collection is a set of uh, relic quality link, uh, and it shows the, uh, shows the belt tab there, uh, and also stamped up Ac Acme patent. So it's clearly patented. It's commonly called the Sankster link, uh, as, as one of the developments of it was was by the Sankster, uh, by Thomas, I think it's Thomas Sankster, who also invented the Sankster mount, uh, the auxiliary tripod that you'll have seen in, in some of our other videos. So here we uh, see it then all loaded up with blank ammunition ready to be fired uh, and being loaded into the gun. Because the belt didn't have a follower, the last thing to go through was a round, so the pulls couldn't act on it properly. It meant that it caused a stoppage straight, uh, you know, straight away. The last round didn't fire, and we had to strip it out of the feed block manually. As you can see us doing here. It's good. We then also tried the Mark III Star Air Service Link, commonly called the Prideaux Link. Uh, it's not quite 
uh, that that was earlier variants it seems but you can see from our examination here you know it, it it's got these two ribs uh it's stamped we've got some um you know some great selection in the collection uh we've got a few of these rounds so we were able to put a, a, a fair few more and and this one here is uh, marked up with mark three star look back fin b-a-k-f-i-n i'm not quite sure off the top of my head who that manufacturer is uh but we've got quite quite a lot of those uh this one here is just a, the mark three star and then i think it's an i underneath it uh so yeah um you know great great to have so much of it and that's what was used in the mark one star and then the mark two onwards air service guns because disintegrating link is used so that it doesn't you don't have a bout or anything da um, trailing from the from the gun in the air uh, quite simply you just assemble it like you would any other uh, disintegrating link probably familiar with you're just able to pop it all together um, building belts to any length you want but through one round at a time. So you didn't have the problem of you know, fixed length bouts like the 250 rounds that you'd have with the uh, you know, fabric, cloth bout, web bouts, or the solid metal bout that you've seen previously. And as I said, we filled it with blank and here's a reasonable length set of it that we uh, put into the gun and ready to fire. As an alternative and a bit of an experiment, we use some of this Browning Air Service link. Uh, now, this was introduced to, for the uh, sometimes Vickers made Browning machine guns that were used in Royal Air Force uh, aircraft throughout the Second World War. And we, you know, we've got quite a bit in the collection. It's quite common, uh, but it seems to be that it, I, I've certainly never seen it used in a standard Vickers feed block. So decided to try assembling uh, a length. We've got two different types. Uh, thought we'd just pick one of those, assemble a length of it. Uh, yeah, very easy to, to put on the rounds, as you can see here. And it's the same as all the other disintegrating link. Uh, we were able to uh, you know, build, a, build quite a reasonable length bow. What was quite interesting though is this this holds the rounds much closer together than the standard Vickers links or the Vickers ammunition belt so I wasn't really sure how it would work whether it would cause any stoppages at all um, but it seems to have run quite quite nicely it's a very flexible belt actually. And as with the previous links, it had to be taken out manually because there was no follower. Now, possibly the most commonly and recognised Vickers ammunition belts are the stripless belts, but a bit of the history behind it is as early as June 1918, we were looking at expendable uh, machine gun belts, sorry, early as March uh, 1918, to get away from using brass strips. So, yeah, they really thought about the design of doing so, how it would work, because you needed the brass for filling, you needed the brass strips for feed, uh, and they eventually came up with this, and we're lucky enough to have one in the collection. Uh, the feed tab there is is broken away at one end, but you can see it's it's you know nicely made. Uh, I don't think this example has ever been used, which possibly explains that when we when we tried to fill it with some uh, some drill rounds to start with, uh, it's very, very tight. The first two pockets fed quite... Uh, nicely um but on the on filling the the, the next one uh the third we heard a stitch start to give 
uh, and considering the rarity of these belts, uh, we decided to stop at that point. So there's no firing from this one in particular, um, but we expect it to work in the same way. We didn't want to force that last round in and we didn't want to use it in the gun. Now, you know, iterations of the belts moved over time and this is a Mark III variant. Uh, from 1941 with a brass tab. Not all brass tabs are earlier marks. You do get the Mark IV with a brass tab as well. Um, but it, you know, it works in just the same way. The, the variations are really on how it feeds. And you can see when we compare the Mark IV, you know, the bottom of the screen here, with a Mark III, the Mark III is actually slightly longer uh, and the rib uh, fits over you you can see the rib of the mark three over the top of the mark four belt there so you know it's just a slightly different sized belt uh, this is another variant where it didn't have a tab at all it just had a folded and glued piece of um, piece of belt this one's march 1942 by thomas french and sons uh, we believe although it's not marked up this is a mark four it looks exactly the same as the mark four when we hold them up closely and you know it seems to be about the right um, right width. The, the Mark IV that I'm comparing against here is very, very well used. It's one of the, the belts that we do fire from quite regularly. It's January 1944 look. Um, you can see that it will take uh, take rounds very, very easily in this case. You know, a fresh out of the box belt really won't. You'll need to use the belt plug to, to ream out the, 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 um, the pockets to be able to put ammunition in. You can see from this example that it's not the case. We decided only fire five rounds because there's plenty of our other videos where you can see this belt being used, um, but here you go. There you go, an overview of the different types of belts and some of the links that we use for the Vickers machine gun. Plenty more of the information on the website and we've got the specific page on ammunition boxes and belts that should cover this and quite a lot more including the, the Colt links, South African links, different calibers that obviously we weren't able to fire through the 303 inch guns. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. Please support us on Patreon if you're able to and let us know of anything you'd like to see in the future. I look forward to hearing from you.